This is Dr. Shalua, your host, and today we are going to discuss how to identify golden opportunities. And this question has been asked by a lot of people, including myself. People go around looking for golden opportunities and how to make the most out of these golden opportunities. And for some reason, there are some people who seem to be very good in identifying these golden opportunities compared to the rest of us. So what secret do they know that we don't know? Now today I will attempt to discuss a little bit about how do you identify these golden opportunities and the possibility of seizing these opportunities when they present themselves to us. Now, let me start by defining what is an opportunity. An opportunity is a set of circumstances that make it possible for something to happen. Either situations which are favorable or the time or a right occasion. So it accounts for these three major things. Favorable situation, the right timing, and also the occasion which presents itself to us. Now, to be able to identify and seize these favorable situations or opportunities which make things happen, they are few factors that we need to look into them, study them just a little bit, and then see if it can, they can help us in being able to identify these uh, opportunities and also to make the most of these opportunities when they present themselves to us. Now, when we look at these factors, you will see they have everything to do with us or with you. They are all internal factors because you can be in the same situation. Somebody else makes the best out of that situation while you are struggling, while everything else is the same. I've been asking myself so many times, why is it so? Why didn't I see this? This person just seized this opportunity. I thought that it was a problem. I thought that it's a calamity, while other people look at it as an opportunity. What do they have that I don't have? And let's look at the factor number one. The factor number one is to have a definitive goals. And what do I mean? These people, they ask this critical question. What exactly do I need to accomplish in life? And they are very keen to put it down and organize their priorities and focus on the goal that they have in life. It might be one goal or it might be several goals that they want to accomplish. To some, it can be financial freedom. Some, it can be career development. It depends. Other people want to become professionals in a certain field. Let's say they want to become entertainers or they want to become scientists or they want to become businessmen. Whatever your goal in life is, the good thing is goals make something happen. Things don't just happen haphazardly. Many people think that success is accidental. No, success is a planned 
endeavor or initiative. Somebody thought through, somebody worked it out, they had set of goals and they had set of activities that correspond to the goals that they have. Now, goals will always lead us to point of factor number two, which is sight. Now, you ask yourself, what is sight? Sight is a perspective or an eye of looking at a favorable ingredient. And a critical question here, these people normally ask themselves, what is a resource that is abundant around here that it can solve somebody else's problems or my problem? This is a very critical question because it is an eye opener. I will give you an example. I lived in a southern part of Africa for five years and I lived in the desert. And in the desert, what we have there is abundant of sand. And this is wonderful, beautiful sand dunes. And guess what do we have? We have tourists coming all over around the world coming to the sand dunes. And I realized something. These tourists needed a souvenir, something to take back home to show that they were in Africa or they were in the desert. So the local people take this desert sand, put it in the bottle and label it very well, the Kalahari experience, the Kalahari sand back at home. They put it in small bottles and they sell this sand to every tourist who pass by there who go or who goes and visit the sand dunes. And you might ask yourself, literally, you can sell even sand? Yes, that is the abundant resource they have around. They have opened their eyes and they have seen, yes, this is what we have in abundance. Everybody around the world come to experience the desert and we can make a good use of the desert. Look around you. What resources do you have in abundance? And you can use that resource to solve your problem or to solve somebody else's problem. Another incidence again in uh, the same place, the same part of Africa, where the two oceans meet, the Atlantic Ocean and the Indian Ocean. The residents of this place have made a good business by taking the ocean water and put it in the bottle and you will have thousands of tourists lining up to buy this ocean water which has been put in the bottle because of the story where the two oceans meet, the waters are very turbulent and there is a special experience to go to a place where two oceans meet and there is a lot of touristic attraction around that place in the southern part of Africa. What resource do they have? The resource they have is the meeting of the two oceans. But I know so many places they have an ocean, but people are poor. Uh, cities are poor. They don't know how to recognize the resources that they have around and capitalize on that. Now, let's quickly move to point number three. Point number three or factor number three is timing. When do I do it? That's a question which you ask yourself. Now, a critical question here will be, if I don't do it today, what consequences do I have to deal with 
tomorrow. What are things that can happen today or they're favorable today, they're not going to be there tomorrow. Remember that some of the variables in the equation of a favorable situation, they are the function of time. They might be available today and they might not be available tomorrow. Let me give you some quick example. For instance, you are inclined to start a small business and the current policies of the country are favorable to small businesses. To you, this is a right time to start your small business because you do not know if tomorrow you're going to have the same policies which favor small businesses. And we all know around the, around the world, policies do change depending on the administration which is in power, which is in the office. I'll give you another example. For instance, you want to upgrade yourself at your place of employment in terms of education and credentials. And you have a boss who is really pro-education. Now, so long as that boss is in the office, that is a window of opportunity. The environment is favorable for you to upgrade yourself. If this boss retires or leaves for another better opportunity and you have another boss who knows probably this boss will not be pro-education. So for you, this is the window of opportunity or the window of favorable situation for it to happen. Now, every person has something that wants to happen. For instance, you are in business and at this particular time, the product that you're manufacturing has a high demand. This is the time to up the production of your product because you do not know what tomorrow holds. Probably tomorrow we won't have the same opportunities we have today. Who knows, probably tomorrow the market is going to be saturated. Everybody is going to be producing the same product. So the opportunity is now. You have to move with the time. So look at what you want to happen because in the definition of the opportunity, we say that it is a set of circumstances which make it possible for something to happen. And it accounts for time. You know, you have to have the right time. Now, there are things that are favorable Today, they might not be favorable tomorrow. Now, the last factor which I want to discuss with you, and I find it very fascinating, is courage. Now, in courage, we ask ourselves this critical question. What exactly am I fearful of to make me make those baby steps or to make that first step. To most of the people, it is the fear of failure. Fear of failure has paralyzed a lot of people. Most of the dreams got shattered. Most of the goals go unaccomplished because people are afraid to fail. When they think about failing, they get paralyzed. While if you look at successful people, they want to fail so many times until when they know what really works and what really doesn't work. So don't be afraid to fail. 
the trick here or the secret here is start small but maintain a bigger picture and calculate all your risks have a backup plan if this goes wrong what is the plan b to uh, to curb what has gone wrong if this doesn't work what are we going to do calculate your risk do the risk assessment look very thoroughly in your plan and before you start Remember, start small, start with baby steps, but maintain a bigger picture. Maintain your big vision and your big dream, but just start small. It's like a ladder. You start with stair number one. You start with the first step. And that first step is going to be a foundation of the second step. And you just go incrementally, slowly by slowly. Do not be afraid because fear will paralyze you. Many people just talk the talk, but they don't walk the talk. They are good in blogging their vision. They are good in sharing and casting the vision and their plans to everybody else. But when it comes to the courage of getting started, that is where the problem arises. They do not have the courage. Now, what is the paradox here? The paradox is do not seek for golden opportunities. Refine your goals. If you refine your goals, your eyes will open. It will be easy for you to identify favorable situations, favorable conditions for your goal to happen. I think you have uh, enjoyed this podcast. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so very much. And again, this is Dr. Shalua. How do you identify golden opportunities? We do not go out trying to identify opportunities. We refine our goals and all of a sudden our eyes open. Thank you.